On the news tonight, ABS announces plan to host Shine the Light reality TV show. More bodies recovered from Obaru boat mishap. Federal government takes measures to end medical tourism. As 17 people die in Russia attacks against Ukrainian city. Hello, beautiful evening and welcome to Evening News on ABS Television. I am David Opokwasele. Before the news in details, here is a special message. Governor Chukwu Masolo does come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State Academy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's continue to give him maximum support for the tax ahead. We begin tonight from the governor's from the government house, Orca, where with utmost determination and passion to continue to showcase Anambra State on the global level, Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS, has announced her plans to host Shine the Light reality TV show. The managing director of the establishment, Sachi Dobidiegu, disclosed this when he led members of the planning committee on a courtesy visit to the Anambra State Association of Town Unions, ASATU. Disclosing plans for the show, Sachido revealed that the project has the main trust of showcasing Anambra traditions, cultures, and values for people to see how the state shines the light that should be emulated. He called for the partnership with Asatu to ensure that the initiative becomes a reality, even as he reeled out strategies to make the show a worthwhile outing while noting that Asatu will play a critical role to ensure the success of the program, Sachido said that the show will involve all the communities in the state, soliciting for support and sponsorship from stakeholders. Reacting, the national president of Asatu, Baris Atayta Sabudo, assured ABS of their maximum support to ensure that the program becomes a reality while thanking the organization for the wonderful initiative. Other members of ASA, to including the National Vice President, Professor Charles Mwadigwe, the President General of Enugu Chief Bonnie Ozon Kwako, reeled out questions and suggestions to the organization for the program's success. In a vote of thanks, the director of the upcoming show, Mrs. Chinye Ozo, appreciated ASA to for giving them the opportunity to interface with them and describe them as critical players in grassroots development. From Obaru, we report that more bodies have been recovered following the Friday's boat mishap at Omonangwo in Obaru Council area. The families of the victims and survivors who waited for the arrival of the recovered corpses could not contain their tears as they narrated their experiences to the ABS. For instance, Mr. Bernard Achono from Isialam Bano, Boru who resides in Umputu town, who lost his wife and three children, aged between two to six, said his family left in order to move to a safe place as the water had submerged almost all the communities, but regretted that the engine boat capsized due to dangerous waves. Others who lost family members, including Messrs. Kenneth Ezi, Matthew and Sebastian Omoji, and Dominic Dalla Amuzia, expressed grief and shock over the incident, saying that mostly children and women died in the ill-fated boat. The driver of the ill-fated boat, Mr. Desmond Damugo from Ogua Neocha, who said the total number of persons on board were 48, narrated how the market women besieged his house and persuaded him to ferry them to Obakuba, but they could not make it due to the water waves which knocked the boat against the pillars of Omonangwa or Somala Bridge against all efforts he made to stabilize the boat. ABS reporter Ogotukuo Rano, who covered the incident, reports that about 10 bodies have been recovered as at the time of this report, while all the houses, roads, and markets in the community have been submerged, while the villagers parked their farm produce and buildings along the flooded tarred roads. Christians have been asked to show gratitude and put their trust in God, for he alone has the power to conquer in every life challenge. Reverend Father Nicholas Okekocha of St. Aloysius of Gonzaga, who stated this in a homely while celebrating Sunday's Mass. 
the homely centered on the life of the biblical Nehemiah and the leper and the Good Samaritan. Reverend Fado Kekocha noted that healing is a great restoration by God to show his premise over all things, stating that it is important for Christians to recognize God blissfully and bear witness for, to it. He frowned at those who haven't enjoyed God's blessings upon their lives, went ahead to one shrine or the other for thanksgiving. He further advised Christians to depend solely on God as he has the power to change their conditions and bless the country. Father Keiko advised Christians to be wise while casting their votes come 2023 elections for God is ready to heal the land. At the Anglican Church of Resurrection Parish, Amobia, the vicar, Reverend Christian Wafo, says that God embedded talents in the life of everyone created by him for them to serve him with such talents. Reverend Wafo maintained that it is essential for people to discover their gifts so as to utilize them properly for the work of God and humanity. Correspondent Amakachi Buzoko reports that a series of prayers were offered to God and for God's intervention upon the country, especially to save the lives of those who are ravaged by the flood. The Standards Organization of Nigeria's SON, Anambra State Office, has reiterated its readiness to withdraw the Mandatory Conformity Assessment Program, MANCAP Certificate, of any manufacturer over substandard products in Anambra State. The Director General and Chief Executive Officer of of the organization Malam Farouk Salim, represented by the Anambra State Coordinator of the organization Engineer Nipede Adeoye, gave the warning while presenting MANCAP certificates to over 13 companies in Oka. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Chibata, takes the story from here. According to Malam Sami, Son is in testifying the fight against local manufacturers in the area in the habit of cutting corners on the quality of their products, warning manufacturer company with manca certificates not to compromise the standard of their products, but rather improve their qualities. Presenting the certificate to beneficiary, the Son boss noted that the manca certificates are being presented to the beneficiary to show to the world that their products met the required standards. Now, as uh, we say, it's an acronym of mandatory conformity assessment program. And this was brought uh, up by the organization in the year 2006 for locally manufactured goods. Before the inception, we have something we call SOMCAP, which is the standard of Nigerian conformity assessment program. And that is particularly for onshore goods. We now look at it that we monitor the things that comes into the country. There's a need to monitor what is produced at our doorstep too. And that was why the organization did it to come up with that policy of mankind. Speaking on behalf of the other beneficiaries, the executive director of Townshall Ventures Nigeria Limited, Mr. Ikechku Ibozulike, assured son and customers of standard and quality products while appreciating son for considering their companies worthy of their certificates. The, the products have been tested and trusted. The product is a household and when it comes to vegetable products, vino, vino oil is a household you know, and uh, arguably the best vegetable oil product in the market, uh, both me anywhere. So uh, we, we are asked to come again for this later because the quality has been top notch since then and we have been through uh, research and development, we have really improved. Adding that all guidelines would be adhered to. Watching evening news on ABS television still to come. Federal government takes measures to end medical tourism as 17 people die in Russia's attacks on Ukrainian city. We we'll remind you that Governor Tuo Masolod has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's continue to give him maximum support for the tax ahead. More details after this break. Stay with us. Is there ahead? Oval 
two three in one smart choice this the federal government of nigeria is working to end the one billion dollar spent on medical tourism annually the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Geoffrey Onyama, disclosed this while signing a memorandum of understanding on behalf of the government with the African Export and Import Exim Bank, AfriExim, for the establishment of an medic African Medical Center of Excellence in Abuja. Princess Ekwe Ajide of our Abuja Brew has the details. The $300 million medical center will cater mostly for known tropical diseases, which the minister said is on the increase because Africans have failed in research and development. Hence, the project is a giant leap for Nigeria. According to him, developed countries claim to assist the less developed countries, when in actual fact, it is the other way around as the less developed countries have a greater number of experts, especially medical doctors working in abroad, which in itself is technical assistance to those countries. Be a, a, a source, an institution for research R&D, and that is vitally, vitally uh, important because that's the only way we can have a sustainable and comprehensive medical um, uh, 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 facilities and uh, uh, treatments uh, in, this, in, in this country. We have seen, you know, with the COVID pandemic, the, um, when it suddenly came to uh, um, uh, treatments uh, to, to give us access, you know, uh, to their pharmaceutical products. And, uh, and so again, that's why it's so important uh, for us to be involved in uh, research and development and to be able to actually produce uh, a lot of these uh, uh, treatments uh, uh, for ourselves. So for the Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, this is another testimony that Nigeria is concerned about the health care of its citizens. He disclosed that already the federal government had in conjunction with Indian government begun an affordable diagnostic center in Kanu with state-of-the-art laboratory equipment to cater for the needs of citizens but for the privilege of being in Cairo at that time being where he was as a direct as, as a vice president of Afrasian Bank he would have died and when he survived it he said well other Nigerians and Africans who would not be privileged to have my 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 my, my, my my other position must not die like foul, and that I think is the is the is the philosophy behind the African uh, <clears throat> Center for Medical Excellence, and I, I cannot commend you enough. Earlier, the president of Afrexim Bank, Professor Benedict Orama, paid glowing tributes to President Muhammadu Buhari's administration for accepting to be the host country for other African countries that will house the medical center, especially as no human development is possible without quality health care. He said the medical center, which will be the first of its kind in the continent, will promote international trade in medical tourism in full spectrum of services in various specialist areas and general healthcare services in addition to training, research and development. Development educational programs in partnership with leading global institutions such as University of Wisconsin Institute Hospital, King's College Hospital London and Christie's Manchester in order to develop additional insights into diseases and treatment trends to improve the quality of care available in Nigeria and the West Africa region. It also established the largest and most diverse biobank in Africa, enabling it to attract global and pan-African partnership, making it a global point of reference in the region. It will be recalled that President Buhari had performed the groundbreaking ceremony of the project in December 2021 in Abuja, Princess Ewi Ajide, ABS News. Abuja now to the Ukrainian, Ukrainian war. At least 17 people have been killed by Russian missile strikes on the southeastern city of Zaporizhia. The Ukraine Def Defense Ministry has said dozens more were wounded and several residential buildings destroyed. The city is under Ukrainian control but is part of a region that Russia says it annexed last month. 
Zaporizhia has been hit repeatedly in recent weeks as Russia hits back at urban areas after suffering defeats in the south and north northeast Ukraine. Parts of Zaporizhia region, including its nuclear power plant, which is around 52 kilometers from the city, have been under Russian control since early in the invasion. The Ukrainian regional governor in Zaporizhia, Alexander Stakuk, said 12 Russian missiles partially destroyed a nine-story building and leveled five other residential buildings. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky called the challenge merciless strikes on peaceful people again. UFC World Weight Champion Leon Edwards has revealed that the trilogy fight against his rival Kamaru Usman will be held in March of next year after he dethroned the former champ at UFC 278. In August, Edwards pulled off one of the greatest comebacks in MMA history when he knocked out the former World Away champ and pound for pound king with a thundering head kick with less than a minute left in the fight while he was down in rounds. It was the first knockout defeat that Usman would suffer since he started in MMA in 2012. After Leon Edwards became the new World Away champ, there, was, there were talks about a potential Joge Masdivia grudge match as the two have had a long history between them. But it seems as if those talks are going to be put to the side so Kamaru Usman can rightfully get an immediate rematch. Remember, you can follow news and programs from any part of the world on ABS by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube at youtube.com slash ABS Television, OKA. You can follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV or log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. Before we go, here are the main points again. We told you that ABS has announced plans to host Shine the Light reality TV show. More bodies have been recovered from Obaru boat mishap as federal government takes measures to end medical tourism. We also told you that 17 people have died as Russia attacks Ukrainian city. We remind you that Governor Chukwuma Soludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's continue to give him maximum support for the tax ahead. And that's the news this evening. Thanks for joining us. I am David. Oh, what was it?